Hi everyone, this is Fabi and in today's video we'll be discussing the difference between the networks used in the automotive field, namely LIN, CAN, FlexRay and MOST. After watching this video you'll know the basics about these networks, how they differ from each other, where they are used and how you can experiment with them at home. If you're new to the channel, this video is part of an educational series I'm doing called Embedded Systems Explained and the aim of this series is to teach you embedded systems concepts in a simple to understand manner and with examples so that you know where these are used in the real world. I will put a link to the playlist in the pinned comment down below so you can learn about concepts such as DMA, WART, I2C, SPI and many others. Quickly before jumping to today's video, every single node, whether it be in LIN, CAN, FlexRay or MOST, need a PCB in order to function. So let's hear a quick message from today's sponsor, PCBWay. Special thanks to PCBWay, which is a one-stop shop for all your PCB prototyping, 3D printing and CNC machining needs. Click the link in the description to buy 5 PCBs with 2-4 to four day shipping for under $30. If you have an idea for a new product or already have everything developed, PCBWay offers complete manufacturing services from producing PCBs, buying the necessary parts, assembling the PCBs, CNC machining, 3D printing, even injection molding, all the way to final assembly. No matter how complex your project is, PCBWay has got you covered. Okay, so first of all, some of you may be wondering why we need so many buses in a single car. Couldn't there be one developed that just satisfy all of the needs of all the systems in a car? Well, as with everything in engineering, there have to be sacrifices. You can't maximize all important aspects at the same time. If you think about speed, reliability and cost, you can't maximize all of these three at the same time. If you for example need an interface with really high speed and high reliability, it's most likely going to cost you a lot. If reliability isn't that important, let's say you're just transferring frames of a video, but only speed matters, you may be able though to optimize the cost for example. So in a car we have a lot of different needs and it's pretty obvious I think by now that we can't cover all of them with just one bus. The four networks we are going to discuss about are LIN or Local Interconnect Network, CAN or Controller Area Network, FlexRay and MOST or Media Oriented Systems Transport. Usually LIN would be used in non-critical applications such as the rain sensor, light sensor, climate control sensor, window control, mirror control, steering wheel stocks and many other sensors. Typically the LIN master of a network would also be the node that connects to the CAN bus in order for each LIN subnet to be connected to other networks of the car. Most of the communication between ECUs in a car or engine control units happens through CAN which is fast and real-time. Critical real-time high-speed communication such as the braking system or the driver assistance systems will communicate through FlexRay which is very fast, reliable and secure. Finally, most is used for media applications such as the infotainment screen or the audio system. I already mentioned them in an ascending order when it comes to the data rates, so LIN is the slowest at around 20 kilobits per second, CAN can get up to 1 megabit per second, flex rate up to 10 megabits per second and most for its fastest variant comes in at around 150 megabits per second. As far as the physical layer goes, LIN uses one wire for the signals, CAN uses two wires which allows for differential signaling and FlexRay and MOST use two wires as well but the fiber optics cable. FlexRay, just like CAN, can also be used through electrical wires though. The things we discussed about until now already tell us a little bit about why some networks such as FlexRay and CAN are used in critical applications and LIN for example isn't. The differential signaling used by CAN and FlexRay is extremely good at rejecting noise. The architecture of these networks also differs. LIN for example is single master with up to 15 additional devices. On the other hand, CAN, FlexRay and MOST are multi-master networks and they allow for more nodes to be connected than LIN. 
Another important aspect of these networks is access control, or who decides when communication is started. In the case of Lin, polling by the master is used, meaning that the master asks the nodes for information and the nodes respond accordingly. Because the other buses are multi-master and masters are usually allowed to start communication without being polled, more sophisticated methods are being employed by the others. For CAN, this would be CSMA slash CA or Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Avoidance. This means that a node which wants to start communicating would listen to the bus before actually starting this communication and if communication is already undergoing by another node, it would wait until this is finished before starting its own communication. Because of this, CAN is referred to as an event-driven bus, meaning that the nodes themselves decide when to start communicating based on an event that happened, which other nodes on the bus need to be informed about. Flexray is based on another concept named TDMA or Time Division Multiple Access, which relies on time slots being allocated to each node for communication. Each node is allowed to start communicating only when their time slot is active. Finally, most uses a combination between TDMA and CSMA slash CA. Fun fact. 2G GSM, which most of us use on our cell phones to make phone calls in the late 90s and early 2000s, also used TDMA or time division multiple access in order for multiple people to be able to make calls at the same time and in the same frequency band. Now let's talk about how individual messages look like on these buses, how much payload we can have with each message and what the overhead looks like. With Flynn and CAN, we can fit a maximum of 8 bytes of payload and the overhead, which is extra information we use for identification, error correction or other purposes, is in the case of Lin 44 bits and in the case of CAN either 47 or 67 bits. The reason we have two values with CAN is because we have the standard CAN with 11-bit identifiers and extended CAN with 29-bit identifiers. This isn't to allow for more devices to coexist at the same time on the bus because with 11 bits we can already have more than 2000 devices on the network but it creates a message priority system which is not present in the standard CAN. The additional bits we have with the extended CAN are used exactly for this. Flexray messages can carry up to 254 bytes of payload and all of this with only 64 bits of overhead. With most, there are multiple protocols available, but the fastest one out of them and the one that allows for most bytes in a message is most 150 and this allows for 372 bytes of information, so of payload, with only 96 bits of overhead. This clearly shows us that Flexray and most are much more efficient, having a higher percentage of useful information, so of payload, in each message. So by now, you have a pretty good idea of what these networks are. LIN is the cheap one, it's meant for non-critical systems. CAN and Flexray sort of go hand in hand, they are used for the critical parts of the car, they are fast and they are reliable. And finally, most is meant to carry a lot of data, such as videos, and so the speed is really important here. Finally, let's talk about how you can create your own networks at home if you want to prepare for a future job or just to extend your knowledge. The simplest one would be LIN, as you can use the WART interface, which is available on most microcontrollers, to set up the communication. If you want to learn more about WART, you can watch my video from this series to learn more. When it comes to CAN, Microchip has a bunch of microcontrollers with CAN integrated and they also have the right drivers for you to get you started. With Flexray, we need to start looking at ARM microcontrollers and development ports, which can start to get expensive to work with at home, but Texas Instruments and SD Microelectronics do offer variants. With most, you'd have to use a dedicated network interface controller chip connected to a powerful microcontroller or processor in order to achieve communication. 
All of this tells us that Lin and Ken should be what you experiment with at home, with flex ray and most being quite inaccessible for the typical hobbyist. In the description below you'll find links to buy the chips and microcontrollers I talked about in this video. If you guys are interested, I will go in depth on each of these networks in separate videos. If you want to learn more about Ken specifically, I already have a video on it and you can check it by clicking on the card which is going to pop up on the screen right now. Thanks for watching, make sure to like the video if you found it helpful, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're going to be notified when I post new videos. Anyways, I'll catch up with you in the next video, stay tuned.